Hello, good evening. Welcome Hello. to Toffee TV. It is the Everton Club call. Um, who put the title? Okay. The, the title isn't for us to discuss whether Triple Seven are legit. I mean, you can that needs changing straight away, doesn't it? But we will be discussing Triple uh, Seven because there has been a story today, obviously, um, in the New York Times saying that the takeover could actually collapse, which has been rejected, I think. Uh, Alan Mize has certainly spoken to someone and put tweets out. There's been a Triple uh, Seven have made a statement, which the Echo have got as well. Um, which it's Sorry, an, I've been busy all day. It's what? basically Triple Seven said it's an ongoing process and there's a time scale for it, and that's the time scale oh, okay. will be the time scale. So, because when I saw the this the New York Times, yeah, article, yeah. not the London Times mm. one, which says they're in for more money than they were before. Yeah, right. Yeah, and you know, it's, it's. I mean, some of these things are coming out with such. Well, we had a few quiet days last week. Now that Ped's back, of course. Yeah, this business mm, is a common denominator. Um, yeah, you know, one minute it's. We owe them forty million. The next minute, it's sixty-five million. One minute, it's for whatever. The next minute, it's to pay wages, mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. So who knows what's actually true? Because the sources are all clearly not Triple Seven, and they're not Everton Football Club, and yeah, what have yeah. you. But um, so when I saw the article it came out midnight ish, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, so I pinged a note to the people who I know at Triple Seven, mm -hmm. and. I got back the answer I expected, which is sounds like what's then ended up in a, an Echo article because yeah. once you, if that becomes your standard form of words, you know I might have got them first, but it doesn't mean they're going to change. Does yeah, it? yeah, yeah. And it's very acceptable, I think. Um, I assume it said something like, "And we're not going to talk during this process." Yeah, because that's what they said at the beginning, which mm. is obviously a nice stock response for them. It means anything can pop up, and they can just say, "Well, we said we weren't going to." You know, out of respect for the process, we're not going to say anything. So they haven't. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, the people who watch this, hopefully some of them watch the business with Blaine stuff, me and you do. And and I said similar processes where you make a, a submission of documentation. It's quite natural to get some feedback quite quickly because, you know, the minimum is, yes, we've got the stuff you've sent. Mm. Yeah. Um, and then when they look at the stuff you've sent, they might ask questions about it or they might note that what you've sent is incomplete or, or whatever. So so I would expect some toing and froing, you know, mm. going on during perhaps most, if not all, the period of the actual um, deliberations by the various entities. And um, what is it? I think I tweeted about it this morning. It's, what, there's six weeks or more yeah. uh, left of this. And and we as fans perhaps should try and not get too reactive to stuff that is obviously a hot topic for journalists. Yeah, that they have um, a free reign in some respects because they're just going to get stock responses, aren't they, from Triple Seven? Yeah, yeah. Um, and therefore, none of what is said can any of us really know if it's true or not. We only know what's reported, and the reporters take in good faith what they're told by whoever tells them. Mm. And, and it, you know, if I'm a reporter for the New York or the London Times and someone at the FCA tells me something, I'm going to assume it's right, you know. I, I might not question whether they should be telling me. And if they are telling me, why are they telling me? Because ultimately, you know, does confidentiality mean anything, you know? Um, and you would think this is a confidential process. Mm. I mean, we've been told many times, that, in fact, uh, McMaster's at the Premier League, has talked about having a big drawer full of all the people who got rejected. Mm. Would you even enter a fit and proper owner's test if you thought everything that you did for the next 10 weeks was going to get reported publicly? You know, you wouldn't, mm, would you? True, yeah. Um, you know, and it, it's just, it's a curiosity that Everton is very visible and public at the moment. And I'm, I can't get too excited about it, Baz. It just washes <laughs> over me, mm. really, because we don't know what we don't know. We don't know what's true and what isn't true. We do know that this triple seven organization has got some interesting business practices. Mm. They may or may not be 
ones that we would sign up to. Yeah. But by the same token, they may or not be ones that the people making the decision care about. Mm. You know, it's very uh, it's supposed to be a very objective process, isn't yeah. it? So let's see. We'll anyway, see. Dex has got a question. Yes, so. we've got Dexy on the line. Dex, are you there? Hello, Dex. He's gone, has he? Come on, Ned, you've only got one. I know, one job. Hello. He's eating, that's what it is. Oh, it's okay. Is Ned eating? Yeah. I, was Hello, that... Dexy. Hello, I can hear you. Hello, Hello can hear you can now, hear mate. You can now, hear you now. Mate. Oh, what? great. Good evening. Yeah. What? Do, I sound, do, do I sound like a frog? Not yet, Not but quite. there's still time. <laughs> no, I'm... I'm... Not concerned over the triple seven takeover, right? Yeah, um, but there's so <coughs> many conflict. There's so many conflicting reports, yeah. aren't there? Yeah, so many saying, "Well, you know, uh, they're doing good jobs at certain clubs," and then you've got fans saying they're not, and now you've got the media who have been against Everton all the time. And basically, it's a bandwagon against Everton. So they never have published anything positive about Triple Seven. Are we expected to believe everything we read? I mean, what do you think is going on? Um, I think I'm not as much as I want to believe there's a there's an agenda fully against Everton. There the probably isn't. However, Everton do give journalists or have given journalists in the past some ammunition. But I think my concern, I guess, with Triple Seven is there's way more red flags than there is green flags. And that, I think, is becomes easy to write about. John? Um, well, there's a two-part question, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Uh, one was, should we believe everything we read? Mm -hmm. Emphatically not, particularly nope. if the source of it is social media, even if the ultimate source is a very respected journalist. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think that the, the red flag thing, I think, is pretty important because clearly 777 have made a conscious decision to be quiet during this period of assessment, if we yeah. call it that. Yeah. Um, we do know that journalists, and some very close to home, have looked for good news stories, have asked for good news stories, and none have been forthcoming. Mm. So, again, if you choose <laughs> choose to interpret that as you can't find things that are hidden if they don't exist, mm. you know. Notwithstanding that, the chief executive Genoa seemed quite happy, didn't he? He did. Um, you know, and so on. So, I think there's a perception gap here between perception and fact. I suspect. That's not to say that everything is rosy in the garden in the slightest, you know. Mm. In fact, it might very well be quite dark, but it just seems, you know, that there's some momentum that it's, it's hell of a lot darker than than people would be comfortable with. Mm. And yet, these guys from Triple Seven are in the middle of a very, well, one hopes is a very objective process. And I did speak to, to, to Dave, you know which Dave I mean, if he's listening. We were chatting earlier on. <clears throat> and I did wonder what we were all going to do if this darkness continues and at the end of the process they get approval to buy Everton Football Club because we'll have had a very objective review, apparently, of ratifying mm. their purchase of Fahad Mashuri's shares when we will have spent, some of us, maybe two or three months listening to nothing but bad news. Mm. So the the very small PR offensive that Triple Seven have done up to now, presumably it would have to go into overdrive. Yeah. Um, because ultimately we, the fans, if we call ourselves that, what we sit want to see is action, not words. Mm. And, and there's some very easy ways to set aside, isn't there, the concerns about this organisation. Oh, sorry, not all of them, but at least some of them about the money. Have they got the money to buy Fahad Mishiri shares? Once they've done that, have they got the money to actually, you know, capitalise the business? Have they got the money to complete the stadium? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And do all that in a, a not leveraged way. And and I and already we're seeing some stories that maybe that's exactly what these guys are going to do. Um, notwithstanding there is 
a change or a vote. I don't know if the change has impacted yet, but certainly only 65% of the value, uh, according to the shareholders of the Premier League, can actually be leveraged, i.e. borrowings. Right, yeah. Still leaves the other 35%, doesn't it? Mm. Um, and that's only talking about the shares they buy off Farad Mishiri, of course, not all the other stuff yeah. um, ab about making the business more viable than it currently appears to be and, of course, completing the stadium where what we expect is the stadium will get completed. Um, what we don't know yet is how it's going to be funded, notwithstanding at the moment it seems to be predominantly by equity. So don't believe everything you read, but also um, try and read everything and, and make your own yeah. mind up, I suppose. Can I just say, um, the other clubs and companies that they own especially the sporting clubs, in those leagues, surely they'd have been checked before they took over those clubs as well? Well, they, they, they of course, and I don't know across all of them, but certainly Standard Liège have a, or Belgian um, FA, I guess, have a process. Um, mm -hmm. But again, it's been reported, was it today or recently, certainly, that they were not completely happy with the evidence that they were provided with uh, apparently, allegedly, whatever. Um, I can't remember where I read this, to be honest. Um, and But faced with the choice of letting Standy Age get into grief or, or saying no, they said yes. But I don't, know how, I don't know how true that is, but one could easily foresee that being a challenge that, with, with all the rumours about... Well, rumours that are being allowed to persist more than they should, which is 777 or administration... Um, maybe that's just people trying to influence the outcome. But again, mm -hmm. my understanding is administration straight from the horse's mouth at the football club is nowhere near close. So um, we should set that aside, that route, if you like that scaremongering, that it's 777 or administration because the club's very firm view is if the 777 thing doesn't happen, it does not mean administration. And yet everything we hear about borrowings and all sorts of things suggests the club has serious cash flow issues. Mm -hmm. So people may ask the question, where's the cash going to come from then? But that, that stadium, when you, if you watch the likes of the drone man and people like that, there's no sign of anything slowing down, is there? Oh, it's not slowing down. I mean, no, I, I, no absolutely not. What you see from week to week, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. And, um, you know, I was in a meeting with Colin Chong last week and Colin continues to say, and he's a straight guy, I think, right? Mm -hmm. No, shouldn't say a thing because that implies, right? No, he's a straight guy. And and yeah. he says that the amount of progress in the areas you can't see with a drone is just as impressive. Yeah, you know, yeah. There's working escalators in the building, there's working elevators in the building, that they're, yeah. they're getting into final finish type stuff in areas and so on and so forth. So there's no evidence that the money isn't there or, or Lango Rourke are happy that they will get the money eventually type of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, that the thing is, and the clubs still say it's on time, yeah, and to budget. They're the words. Um, and anyone who listens to Julia Bold's brilliant, you know, 10 part series, just go and listen to Colin Chong in episode 10. It's mm. a standalone. Yeah. It doesn't spoil the rest of it. If you've not listened to any of it, just listen to episode 10 and you'll hear it straight from Colin's mouth. I appreciate that was done in June, mm. but, but yeah. even so you're right, mate, you just drive down the dock road and, and have a look. <laughs> and, and by yeah. the way, Barry 1878 is the drone you need to watch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's rising and it's, it's clearly going to get finished. Clearly going to get um, finished. When you see the the amount of work that's been, and I know I'm going off my original question, but mm. when you see the the amount of work that gets done from week to week, you can see that stadium being ready for the next season, can't you? It's phenomenal. I mean, I I, I think that you know Colin in particular has remained constant. Like for the two or three years, I've been able to sit across a table and challenge him on it, and it and it's fundamentally. He, he will say it's on time. He's added to that in recent times. It's on budget. And until we get through this about to embark on next winter, we won't know, my friend, but I know mm. Baz and myself, rightly or wrongly, are pretty convinced the thing's going to be open in time mm. for, for the for the start of the season in the year that it's finished rather than uh, at the you know some, some way part through it. So let's all yeah. hope for a relatively mild winter. 
and watch the thing get ready for for the August, which would be fabulous, wouldn't it? Isn't it funny that Liverpool have built a stand? And I'm not being anti-Liverpool here, but well, they haven't they, built a stand, mate. They're having real problems well, building a stand. They, yeah. you know, Liverpool have built a stand. They built the other big stand, and they've had problems with both of them with administration and companies going under. And yet, nothing's ever got said in the media, has it? I, I, my, I, my new, my new story is nothing like we've been ganged up on. No, it's an interesting one because I, I would offer a view that said, you know, Everton may in the past have had an opportunity to be really hard with our construction company in a way that may have compromised the integrity of their business. And yeah. we, and I guess we didn't. And therefore, when the coin gets turned over, they, they're not being as hard with us that they could be. Mm. And guess what? That's called a partnership, isn't it? You know? Mm. And, and, that get, point... and that gets structures completed, yeah? Um, as this one point... will, will get the completed. Point... Wasn't the whole point of this contract, though, that to prove... Lango wanted to prove that they could bring in a stadium on budget uh, and sign the contract to say, you know, we will, this is what you will pay and we will build that stadium. I think when this stadium is completed, it's going to look great in Lango Rock CV, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, uh, yes. and, and, and as you yeah. rightly say, one of the, the best locations for a stadium. Fabulous design by Dan Meese. And it's going to be a showpiece when the Euros get to England. So it'll get another kick, won't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, Three or four absolutely. years after it's finished. And Langer Rourke will love saying, and it was completed. Yeah. Despite all the it. noise, on time and to budget, mm. with COVID, with Brexit, with wars, and we still did the biz. So, you know, they have both. You know they have their other um, reasons for making sure it all comes in squeaky clean. You know Tom Higgins, yeah. who's the senior guy on their side, and you know me again. Keep mentioning me and Baz were at a conference not so many weeks ago, and he was se singing the same tune, wasn't he, Baz? Yeah, yeah. On time, absolutely on budget. time, on budget. And, and, on, and yeah. he said a lovely phrase, which we should all remember. To go back to your original question about should we re believe everything we read, he said journalists don't like good news stories. Yeah. Nope. There's, no, far, well, there's far many yard, There's much more, more yards in bad news stories, right? And right yeah. now, everything about Everton is coming out as bad news. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And let's hope, one way, eventually that turns and uh, yeah. and, and someone uh, turns us into the the great football club we should be again. Mm -hmm. I've, I've got to be honest. At the last home game, I was. I go to Dixie's statue, I ask him for a good game, I ask for the ball. I touch the ball and say, give us some goals type job. Don't say asking him for the ball, Dex, he's not going to pass it to you. <laughs> no, no, it's a shame that, but there we go. We the Marty the Gray. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, but you know who was stood there looking at the fans? And nobody really took any notice because maybe people didn't recognise who he was. Was it Sheik Yashim Ben? Tal Harney no, wanting to buy us? No, okay. No, who? it was Josh from Triple Seven. It was who? Josh Wonder. Josh. Oh, Josh but, Wonder, yeah. Yeah, Josh Wonder from Triple Seven. He was just stood by with his baseball cap on, in as though he was just what, like one of the fans, just watching what was going on. Hmm. And and nobody was taking any notice because maybe a lot of fans don't recognise these people or or what I've got that else to do. And I just mm. went up to him and said, well, you know, what's what's happening? What do we call you? Are you going to be chairman? Or what's going on? He said, just call me Josh. Mm. He just came across as just the, a down-to-earth bloke who was interested in in the history of the club and and, and how the fans are. Mm. It was probably I, seeing dollar signs because this fan base is going to be, you know, Focus well, correctly is going to create a hell of a yeah. lot of value, isn't it? Mm. It really he said, is. He said, it's quite remarkable to see a club who's failing so much in all different ways, and yet you fill, still fill the stadium every week. Mm. Um, and the bigger one will be filled and be too small. Yeah. Exactly. You know, I said, well, that's just what Everton, Evertonia is about. Mm. 
you know. And yeah. uh, but he was he was a nice scene, a nice guy type job, you know. Just stood there watching what mm-hmm. was going on. Oh, you didn't put him off, did you? I tried not to. <laughs> you you <laughs> no, and your mate, dues. Josh. Yeah, fair dues. Yeah. yeah, but anyway, thanks thanks for answering the. All right, thanks. You're welcome. Yeah. Lovely to hear from okay. you, mate. I'm glad I wasn't sounding like a frog this week. No, no frog this week. <laughs> no frog chorus with you this week. Save that for All December. Right, All right, yeah. take care. Okay. Bye bye. To our right, Take care. Bye. See you, Dags. You know um, the Julia thing. Yeah. Have you got up to um, episode ten yet? No. I'm. All, I've just started episode ten. Yeah. Okay. Because there's a bit in there where you can Colin talks about the stadium and. Um, I won't spoil it mm. about enhancements mm. that are being planned. And there's not many enhancements mm. worthwhile at this stage beyond putting more seats in. So if you're a half full sort of person, listen to what he says and just convince yourself, like I have, <laughs> that, put that, that was about in. increasing the capacity. Yeah. Well, I hope so. Yeah. I hope so. Um, I just want to address. The fact that Darren England isn't the referee for the derby at the weekend. Craig Pawson is the referee and David Coote, who's not a great ref either, is, uh, in my opinion, is, uh, is on the VAR. Any? No, no, is on the VAR, so there you go. MGE, rather, is uh, thinks triple seven is very bad news for Everton. Mm-hmm. Um, Mark, who's a Leeds fan, says, I, Baz, as a Leeds fan, that's at Chilino and Bates, I worry for your club. They can smell a new stadium as a bargaining tool for a quick book and negotiating tool. Good luck on Saturday. He's Cheers, not wrong mate. there, is he? Um, it, that would apply, oh, well, that, to, it would hmm? apply to any potential new hmm. owner. The, hmm. the, the, the big attraction there is not just a, a brand spanking new stadium, but the fact that the outgoing guys paid for most of it already. Yeah, yeah. You know, and therefore it's buried in in the you know the cost of buying his shares rather than anything else. So, yeah, it's <clears throat> mad, isn't it? That doesn't mean the new owner built the new stadium just because they own the shares that fundamentally funded it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, MGE MJE rather also wants to know, John, why you think there's no alternative bid for Everton? Are we so broken that we are not commercially attractive at all? Um. No, I think the opposite, to be honest. We're probably so broken that pretty much everybody with a few pence in their pocket would think they could run it better. Mm. Um, you know, you look at um, so where Man United have got to and a guy who's tipping in 25%, right? He thinks his involvement will make them better, doesn't mm. he? And that's how he'll get a return because they do pay dividends because of the Glazers like taking money out of the club. Yeah. Um, so I think that is interest, but... Don't forget, it's not about interest in Everton Football Club. It's interest in buying shares of Farhad Mashiri. And it appears Farhad Mashiri isn't interested in selling his shares elsewhere. He's decided these are the guys he's going to sell to. Mm. And just like my shares, you know, if I wanted to sell them to Baz, no one could make me sell them to to Ned. Mm. And, and I think that's the issue that Farhad Mashiri rightly or wrongly, has convinced himself maybe the best for him, mm. for sure, because there must be a balance there. But even if it's 51% for him and 49% for Everton, right, it, it's hard to see that right now. Yeah. Um, so, unfortunately, we're stacked in behind. He can sell who he wants to, really. Yeah. And not with, sorry, beg pardon. Mm. He can sell his shares to whoever he wants to. Those potential owners of his shares will make that subject to being passing a proper owner's test so yeah, it may be that Farhad says yes to somebody mm. whoever and the Premier League say no and yeah. you, you go around that loop again don't you and that's where you get into what happens if yeah yeah absolutely make sure you hit the like button subscribe if you haven't thank you very much makes a difference we appreciate it um just a couple here Everton fan one two three says hey John part of me is saying let triple seven play on and see if it turns into the direction of success <laughs> towards the top four. And the other half is feeling a bit worried. But I feel we need to let Triple Seven play on. 
I'm not sure what play on means. I think he means just let it play out. Well, it has to play out. It's going to play out, isn't it? That's the way it is. You know, I can't see, and maybe I'm wrong, Mm -hmm. how any external influence, let's call it fan activism, can have the Premier League deciding no because of the fan activism. Therefore, Mm. it does have to play out, doesn't it? Mm. Um, Which is why I said before, I think, I I do wonder how we as fans will react if we have to suffer, and it is suffer in many respects, another six, seven, eight, whatever it is, weeks of negative vibes. And then the answer comes back, yes, they are fit and proper, because that means they become the owners. Mm. Uh, Are we really saying from that moment onwards, fan activism is going to kick in? Because Mm. we've seen... You know, notwithstanding it's not the whole fan base, because if it was, it would be far more high profile. But the fans at Everton, who at Everton, the fans at Man United who don't like the Glazers, have got nowhere, have they? In, no. In trying to move they've them on. They've been trying to move them on. You know, and they've got such a high more, profile advocate in Gary Neville, mm. and it still makes no difference. No. So these people, I don't mean Triple Seven, owners of football clubs, if you look at Morris at Derby or Ashley at Newcastle. They're mm. pretty thick skinned. You know, they live in really fired atmospheres where they don't hear the noise. Yeah. All the rooms they go into are soundproofed and so on. Um, so I do wonder what happens if the majority of a fan, fan base don't want an owner and then the Premier League and others ratify them as the owner. Do you think so? if, if it was... Do you think the Premier, if there was like a lot of noise from the fans that the Premier League would use that to make their decision? Or do you just think the Premier League would just be like, well, we're looking, we've got a set of tests, call it tests, yeah, but test we, we've got a word. Yeah, set yeah. of tests. Yeah, yeah. And if these people pass it, then we're going to pass it regardless of what the fans do because they've know, satisfied our... Yeah, um, I... I would like to know to believe initial at least the basis of it is mm. objective yeah. tests, right? Yeah, yeah. Um and if the tests are totally objective, then you stand and fall by whether people tick a box or not, don't mm. you? Right? Um the FCAs are similar, I suppose. You know, they have a view. Um but the FCAs perhaps in some respects might be a bit harsher because if you can't prove where the money's coming from, then you fail, presumably. Right, mm. um, and, and maybe to give credence and credibility and all that good stuff, one of the reasons the Premier League don't make those judgments is because you need an expert to do it, right? Mm. Um, but to answer your question, I don't know whether the final say is almost well. We've got all this this evidence, mm. but something's not quite right, you know. Um, mm. So I don't know, but. One assumes, and certainly you can imagine litigation would commence. We've talked about this on the channel before as well. One assumes, and I would do this, by the way, back in my day job. If I'm submitting a proposal to an organisation, I go and see what their requirements were before I submit it and make sure I've ticked all the boxes. Because yeah, what's the yeah. point? You know, If they say your corporate colours have to be blue and I know ours are yellow, there's no point in me submitting, is there? Mm. Right. So you have to assume that they've taken, they being triple seven and any other potential future owners, they know what the test is. They know what you have to do to pass it. And they wouldn't submit if they thought they were going to fail. But they have submitted. But they have, yeah, yeah. Because what future does 777, you know, football group have if it's found not to be a fit and proper owner of a Premier League football club? What? How does that re-energise upset fans the other group clubs that they own. What that does that do to some of the very well respected people in their own organization when the company you work for has just been formally and officially refused because they failed a pr- fit and proper owners test. Yeah. Right. So that leads you to conclude when they say publicly they're confident they will pass, it's because they are. Yeah. yeah. It's not just what else would they say? Yeah. But they they are. Mm-hmm. Therefore, the only way they can be confident is if it's an objective test, and whenever they've they've run their own test against themselves, they've ticked all the boxes. Yeah. So it's fascinating because a fair amount of people, if they are approved, are not going to like the answer. 
No. And I guess that's, you know, the question from the guy really is when he says, let it play out, do we just wait and see? Mm. I don't mean no, no, that they, no. they pass or not. I mean, mm. once they have passed, do we see if they can walk the talk? Yeah. Or does a fan base immediately go into, we don't want this to happen mm. sort of thing. And then what happens? You know, yeah. it's, it's just... I hope someone's doing a documentary on it. That's all I can say, because it'll be very, very good. So I mean, Anthony says, all I hear is we don't want Machiri, we don't want Triple Seven, we didn't want MSP. Let's face it, we've been through dark times and it can't get worse, so let's just let Triple Seven come in and see how it goes. I'm sorry. I've Why said write this, it off? Yeah, I've said this before, it can always get worse. Mm -hmm. It Believe me, it can always get worse. Um, mm. and, and without skirmishing, just to prove that statement... If we went into administration, that would be worse. Mm. And so when the new owner comes along, we want evidence, don't we? Yeah. We as fans, I mean, we want evidence that you've uh, clearly you've proven you've got the money to pay off the previous shareholder who owned the place, right? Mm. And Farhad goes off into the sunset with some money or a commitment to some money. But you've got to be able to fund the business as a going concern, and you've got to be able to fund the business from its capital program around the building of a stadium. Mm. So we'll want evidence that those two things have happened or, or will happen. And, and one of the things which the timeliness of this is really helpful for is if the decision, as we expect or hope, comes on or around the end of November, which actually is when the Independent Commission might actually pop up with their answer as well, um, let's have an annual general meeting in January. Yep. Great timing, lads. Mm. You know, and I personally will be stunned if the new owners don't have a brand, you know, the first AGM in a number of years, because that is a watershed moment. I said, the old owners didn't do this. We do. We're gone, yeah. But then come armed with the answers to those questions. So even the most, you know, demanding of skeptics mm. can come away thinking, they've told me enough for me to believe that this, this, and this are going to happen. Mm. And and then they need to do that reporting to the fan base and, and minority shareholders and the like with sufficient regularity to for us to know that what they said, say, in January 2024 stands true at the end of the season, stands true at the start of the next season and, and so on. Yeah. Because the one thing that happens with Premier League football clubs, and we've, we've seen this in Spain for many, many years when they have their presidential elections and stuff for clubs, I mean, if you say you've got funds to buy players, we expect you to buy players. Yeah, yeah. And if you don't buy players, part of what we will conclude is you don't have the money. Mm. And again, listen to the Kevin Thelwell thing, and it's all very sensible and good stuff. Mm. But ultimately, walking the talk is what counts. Well, the underlying thing throughout that message, throughout that is he didn't have money, and we don't have money. Yeah. Isn't it? A lot of what Ke Kevin comes across brilliantly in it. He does. But, which again... Begs the question, why Everton don't humanise them? But hey ho, that's for yeah. a different day. Yeah. But um, but the the big the big message throughout that is we don't have any money. Um, Anthony Edwards, don't know whether it's Goose from Top Gun, I don't know, and also uh, ER, great actor Anthony Edwards says um, Alan Myers is a bit of a mouthpiece for Triple Seven. It's becoming more clear that they intend to leverage debt on the club. Support needs to stop. Supporters need to stop criticising the ones that are highlighting this. Well, first and foremost, Alan Myers works for Sky. So Alan Myers will report... What the editor tells him to. Whatever he's told to, only he'll report whatever the story is. Now, if you're, so, if you're totally against Triple Seven and Alan Myers puts out something that puts a question mark over a report that is inaccurate then you're naturally going to look at whatever Alan Myers is saying in a negative light, aren't you? Alan Myers will report whatever the, whatever the story is out there. There's loads of negative stuff about Triple Seven. Alan, I think Alan's reported a lot of negative stuff about it. He's also reported when stuff is inaccurate. People who, the new, we keep saying, the red flags are there for everybody. We want green flags, don't mm -hmm. we? So if there is green flags out there, let's see them. Let's see them. If yeah, someone yeah. says that, um, if someone says, do you know what I haven't paid their players this month? And it's a report in a paper or it's on in a new and it's, it's not true. 
just because Alan Myers or the Echo or whoever else comes out and says that story isn't true, they were paid. That's not being a mouthpiece. That's just reporting mm. a story, isn't it? It's the same. You got to have both sides, and I think the problem with Triple Seven, what, I, and it's just my opinion, is there's loads on this side, but there's hardly anything on this side. That's right. And this side's the, the <coughs> well, they might do stuff right now. Okay, the Genoa CEO come out the other day and said, "We found this, and we found this, and we found this, and we've turned the club around, and things are moving in the right direction." He he does work for Triple Seven. Everything he said might be absolutely spot on. The caveat to it is he does work for Triple Seven, so is he really going to go in the media and go, yeah, they're not very good owners. I work for them, but they're not very good. He's not, is he? But that doesn't mean there isn't value in him reporting all the things that they've done correctly, is it? Because Well, I'm assuming it, you know those things appearing and, and people like him being offered up, for want of a phrase, to mm. legacy media, if you, if, if you will, mm. and, and then giving him the airtime and asking the questions... Is that helping Triple Seven? Well, yeah, it's trying to put stuff on the green side of of, of the scale, isn't it? Yeah. Um, but does that make the platform that does it a mouthpiece? I don't think so. Mm-hmm. Um, because clearly, if, if negative stories come, and as we've, mm-hmm. we've alluded to, negative stories get more traction than positive Absolutely, ones. So yeah. if you're Sky and you want people to watch your channels or subscribe to your channels, then maybe bad news stories is the way to go, sort of thing. Um, but it, but it is interesting because, um, and the guy says, doesn't he, it's becoming increasingly clear that it's going to be a leverage buyout. Mm. Well, it seems possible. But I don't know where the increasingly clear comes from mm. because right now nobody, but nobody knows what they're saying to the authorities around where the money's coming from. And clearly, particularly for money laundering and all those sorts of reasons, the FCA will... T- pay particular attention to to the money trail won't they um but I, because we don't know where the money's coming from doesn't mean they're borrowing it just mm-hmm. like it's not colombian drug money either as some people have said in the past well I, ooh, hey i'll stand corrected well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. but, uh, <laughs> but you know what i mean it, mm. and there's a vacuum there because you know when you see myers in particular trying to do stuff but it's on social media or which i guess is really himself rather than being Mr. Sky, but when he's doing his, his Sky stuff, it's often in reaction to the negative stuff, isn't it? Mm. So maybe that's where, and maybe in a way, if if you're the only, or one of only a few number of people or entities who are trying to counter negative stories, then perhaps it goes with the territory that you will look like a, um, a mouthpiece. Mm, but if they're not going to, I mean, sure, imagine this isn't, I don't know if this is happening, by the way, Anthony, I'm just, I'm just saying this, but imagine if a world where they've decided and they've, they've publicly <laughs> said this, I mean, they're not going to comment on stuff, but imagine if, for argument's sake, they, okay, they've they got the money, they've got the house in order. Again, I'm just... Whatever hyper- it means. All yeah. hypothetically. Yeah, yeah. And all of these stories are coming out negatively. And it ends up costing us and they walk away. And then it comes out that they had all the money and they had the idea. You know, something happens, we went into administration or whatever. Then people will be kicking off going, why weren't, why wasn't anyone saying them stories were lies then? Why were we getting fed that everything's terrible so we were on that? Do you know what I mean? It's like, and what I'm trying to say is there's got to be a balanced thing whenever you're looking at it. Now, I keep saying it, I've got... I've got no thing either How way. How many messages got... have you had today about no, I've had, seven yeah, I've had New York from, Times? Yeah, thing. yeah, I've had a quite a few. few. And I've had a few from people who were saying it's nonsense and everything else, right? But regardless of that, I've got no issue. I don't care who runs Everton as long as they run us correctly and have a plan for us to return to where I think we should be, yeah. which is minimally fighting for a place in Europe, which is better would be us trying to win trophies, right? Yeah. But just right now, all I know is if it stays the same, say Triple Seven went, enough's enough today, right? We're gone, but whatever. The Premier League said no. Are people going to feel happy? Are people going to go, I feel more confident, we're going to be all right now? Because we're not, because the other fella's not interested and hasn't been interested for a while. 
He's more interested now than he's been in a while. Exactly, right? And that's because he can see the end. Yeah. Now, if they walked away and we went into administration, Ooh. would that make people happy? I don't know. Right? But what administration could mean could be anything up to a points deduction. Well, it's automatic points deduction, oh, so, isn't it? So, therefore, so, you, so we're relegated. Uh, all your players get sold at minimal prices, basically, because that's what the, the administrators do. They don't care. Now, okay, sunny day might be the administrators are able to find a buyer that Farad wasn't looking at. But we'd still be relegated, wouldn't we? Because if they if it was nine points, which I think it is, or 12 points it can be, Everton aren't making that back. Not a chance are we making that back up this season. I'm finishing 12, 13 points clear of, of three other clubs. It does well. It'd be very difficult, I think, given the games we've lost already at home. Okay, now I'm not saying that for all of those reasons we should then just accept anything else as, as the other side of it. But we simply don't know enough. And I don't think Triple Seven are doing themselves any favours by not commenting. Right? By not commenting, they they can turn around and go. We don't want to make any comment. Well, you know, me and Ped were discussing this at dinner time. It's like, okay, don't don't comment on Everton then, but comment on what why you would be interested in a Premier. We all know it's Everton, but if you want to, don't want to name it. There must be interviews they can do where we can see the whites of their eyes while they. Talk about what their plans will be, That's how what the they hope. CEO of Genoa talking is about, surely. You mean you want to hear? I from want to hear from Pasco, Pasco Wanda, Don Dransfield, Dransfield one publicly. of the, the three at the top. I want to see them talking about it. They don't have to go into the ins and outs, but they should be able to give us a, a, a game plan as if they if their football group, sports group, got hold of a Premier League club. What that would look imagine like. that uh, this, we're playing a game now. I think yeah. that hopefully people are coming with more questions. But go back to what I said before, Jack. Hang on, sorry, just pause, yeah. Jackley. If a club, if the club is deducted, I still don't think we get relegated because we've it's got nine points. By the way, right, nine points. So we've got momentum now. I I don't think we've got momentum. We've done all right winning our last game. If we say we, we the next four games will tell us if we've got momentum. Hmm. Moni, we've got Liverpool away, West Ham away, Brighton at home, Palace away. So if we've really got momentum, we'll get minimal seven points out of those twelve, and then then I will come on and go. Jackley, you were spot on. We we have got that momentum now. We could easily not win in the next four, and that wouldn't be momentum. We've won one home game since March. There's no momentum there at all at the moment, and we've had a break. So we've won some games, which is good, and now we're into the next phase. So I wouldn't feel comfortable with us being minus two right now. Because that's what it would be. Because that's what we'd be now, minus two, in October going into four so difficult games. six points behind safety. Yeah, already. Now, the thing is... Now, we could still turn it round, yeah. but it, it makes it I mean, even worse. if you worse. start a season at minus nine... Yeah, then you've got to... You know, mm. but imagine if we got put into administration in February. Yeah, when you are floating, no, you're not at that. You There's know, no money. Imagine, mm. I don't know what points we had last February. But if you just applied, mm. you know, on the first day of February mm. last year, minus nine, and players go, you know what, we're not getting out of this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah and you yeah. just disappear, mm. right? Mm. Particularly those players who think, who come the closure of administration, I'll either be a free agent, yeah, or I will, well, been, of course, yeah. or I will have been sold. Right, because mm. free agent bit might come from breach of contract. I haven't been getting paid, blah blah blah, yeah, yeah. or or I've been sold because the administrator's doing his best to keep this as a go or she a going concern, and I need to sell off the assets I can without destroying the whole. Yeah, yeah. and one or two players achieves that, doesn't it? Um, it is um, an interesting one, but we all have our own views, right? And if somebody thinks that a minus nine point wouldn't kill us off by the way i'm in that category right mm. but but not because we've got momentum because i just think it might focus everyone that little bit more again but because minus six isn't insurmountable oh crikey we've survived by one or twos mm. type points you know in recent times and to think that you know you'd be minus nine no the other thing i must say avoid that one yeah absolutely the other thing 
I have to say, though, is there's no... I've not seen any evidence, and I don't think John has, that... Don't speak if to me. But John can answer himself. <laughs> uh, if that... If Triple Seven walked away, Everton would go into administration. There's no evidence that I've seen being told that that is the case. That's just a rumour that is out there. There's a rumour that is out there. I don't know. That could be utter nonsense. But one thing that keeps getting reported time and time again is that Farad Mashiri is putting money in to top it up. And that would be because of the ground, of course, trying to get that stadium um, over the line and all that. So everything has gone up a bit, hasn't it? To run Everton Football Club, the costs have gone up. That will obviously ease once we're in the stadium. We get better sponsors, whatever, whatever, whatever. So there's no evidence, and it's not fact, that if Triple Seven walked away or it didn't go through, Everton would go into administration. But there is, there's, a, there's stories out there that they have given Everton money to keep, to keep going, basically, to keep Everton running. So if they aren't there, is Mashiri, <coughs> has Mashiri got the money to keep funding Everton? If so, why isn't he funding it now until he moves then? So that is a worry, isn't it? But but like I say, there is zero. I've got no evidence that Everton will go let's, into administration. Should we spend something interesting come out, which go on. thrown at me, but we'll talk about that in a minute because it's not everything, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, let's do some common sense stuff, right? Depending on who you listen to, mm. um, Triple Seven have loaned, what, somewhere between 40 and 65 million pounds to Everton. So let's take the high-end yeah. number, 65, 65 million. million. They fail a fit and proper owner's test, and we're led to believe that means we'll go into administration. Mm. They lose their 65 million. Mm. Would you be lending money if you thought there was any doubt mm. that two things? One, mm. that you, you might fail the fit and proper owner's test. Well, you'd be a brave man, wouldn't you? But if you're pretty convinced you're going to pass it, then you, you know it's the cost of playing the game, isn't it? Or two, and they've seen under the covers, that you not being successful would automatically result in administration. Mm -hmm. right? And then, of course, you've got the, the legal obligations on on the um, official directors, not just people with director in their job title, which is they're incumbent upon them to make sure that this business is a going concern and they could end up in prison if they don't tell people when they should, right? So so when somebody who's, I was going to use a phrase then, but something's on the block, head on the block, yeah? Mm -hmm. When someone's head's on the block and they're only, say, interim, why or why would they run the legal consequences of keeping quiet about whether this business is a going concern or when they know exactly what the consequences are of not doing the right thing, right? Mm -hmm. um, so the official line remains, it's not close. Yeah. And every time this administration thing gets raised, I'm pretty sure every goddamn media outlet, whether it's independent or legacy, gets told by somebody at the club, it's not true, it's not mm -hmm. true, it's not true. Now, plausible plausible deniability might kick in here where the people sending the message might not know because they're not the technical or the technicians yeah but you said it and i don't dispute what people who crawl over spreadsheets might say at all but it's data is data but it's insight that matters right and we don't know what we don't know and heaven forbid that this club is on the cusp of administration and mm. nobody but nobody within the club knows mm. yeah because that's shocking, isn't it? Well, why would you? Can I just ask you this then? If it isn't, and I'm not, and again, there's not no evidence just, to suggest it. But it's just a theory that has been put out there, and like a lot of things with social media nowadays, a theory soon becomes fact. But if why would Triple Seven be putting that money in to keep it going now? Then why wouldn't it be far up Mashiri? Because oh, um, just right now, if Everton do oh, yeah, need right, okay. that extra money, why uh, why would well, it be? Well, th this is. I can give Do you, you think my, theoretically, yeah, obviously? Well, just, my opinion you, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, it is we, we know for fact, don't we, for many a long year, um, the football club, when it's faced uh, calls for cash, it's gone to the largest shareholder and said, can we have some cash, please? Yeah. Right? And Fahad Mashiri has continually, and we all know the huge numbers involved, done that, mm. right? And then he reaches an agreement to sell all his shareholding yeah. to somebody else. Yeah, yeah. And that, hand comes mm -hmm. no go to the other guys because mm. he might think it this way when they pass the fit and proper owners test it's their business not theirs mine. anyway yeah, yeah you know so and but it's also quite clever if you think about it because it mm -hmm. becomes a, a proof test doesn't it for the potential new owners right yeah because if they don't have the money 
I'm listening. Yeah, when yeah. the hand gets held out, yeah, yeah. And Farhad yeah. Mashiri has to hand it over. Yeah. Then presumably they'll be, be in breach of the agreement they have with him. True. Yeah. Yeah. So so the shareholder calls for cash or whatever, maybe in the agreement between Farhad sale agreement between Farhad and Triple Seven. It says, and if there are calls for cash between now and when you finally take over, you have to pay for it. Mm. And presumably it says in there, um, you know, blah, blah, blah. Um, you know, at some interest rate or other, if it, if it all goes negative. A bit wrong. So should we talk about something else? Well, you can, because you start talking, because me and Ped's going to sub me out. Okay, okay well, Ped knows about this one. I'll talk about this one. Ped will come and do yeah, it. Yeah, go on. Um, Apparently, the Premier League is going to stick to the 3 p.m. cutouts on Saturdays, yeah? Yeah. Kind of From 25 28. Disgrace. But every other match will be live on television. Every single game, other than the 3 p.m. games, will be live on television. And on the final day, all 10 games will be live on television simultaneously. So this means that uh, when the new contract comes in, um, 270 of the games will be live rather than 210 like it is now. So we're just a smidgen away from every single game is live every single time. It does also say no one can buy more of the four of the five than f you have to buy. The most you can buy is four contracts. Yeah. Which to, means you'll need at least two subscriptions. That's right. To yeah. win, to watch those games, which, which is, which is still. The way it is now though. It's a, you need at least two now, don't you? Three. Well, if you count Amazon, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, so you have TNT, Sky, and Amazon. Well, any of the games of Christmas, they're all on Amazon, aren't they? So you get yeah. three days of them. Yeah. Uh, you've got TNT, obviously, and you've got Sky. Yeah. Um, I don't get it myself. I'd, Why not go the whole hog? Well, maybe this is the first stage, but I just I don't understand the three o'clock thing. I really don't. I don't. Maybe it's, it feels... I don't know. Maybe it feels like this is now the time to start looking at the situation and maybe they've just given themselves a little bit more time <coughs> and, and to have the conversation. I just think whilst games are not on live, and obviously they will be now because obviously what this factors in more than anything is um, Europa games, really, doesn't it? Because they, they will be on a Sunday, which means they will be live. That's right. Um, you know what the first thing that struck me when on, I read go. that when you sent it over before was won't be many three o'clock kickoffs on a Saturday, will there? Yeah, that's it, isn't like it? Like ten throughout the whole season. Mm. If, if I'm reading uh, Martin Ziegler's tweet correctly, Martin says 270 of the 380 games live, up from 210. Mm. That implies oh, two ten. Sorry, I beg your pardon. 110 games won't be live throughout the whole season. So there's not a huge amount is there of uh, Saturday th three o'clock kickoff. So what about the fans, lads and lasses? Mm -hmm. You know, I know we we get pushed around, but they're hung. They're literally saying there will be 110 live games. Sorry, big one. 110 mm -hmm. games, three three p.m. kickoff. So instead of taking, instead of going down the route of, well, we'll make this acceptable for everybody, and if you want to watch a live game, you can watch a live game because you're a grown up adult, and you should be given the option. They've gone, well, we'll just scrap three o'clock kickoffs, in other words. Because mm. that's all they're doing, aren't they? They're scrapping, yeah, essentially, they're, they're it, scrapping yeah. three o'clock kickoffs for the sake of television instead of being grown ups and saying, no, no, we can still have three o'clock kickoffs and satisfy the TV market. Because that's all that happens right now with streaming, mm. isn't it? It's just a case of we want our cake and eat it. We're not going to have a situation where we have um, two or three games on at the same time. That's right. And that's all it is, isn't it? Mm. Instead of saying, let's. Let's be adults. You can have your three o'clock kickoff as you're going, as it's someone who goes the game and someone who travels the, the length and breadth of the country. Um, but if you want to watch that game, that's still there for you. But it, it's not so much that, is it? It's because there are far more games which won't be three o'clock on a Saturday. Yeah. One assumes they're going to be Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday night, Sunday, early kickoffs on, on a Saturday, late kickoffs on a Saturday. I mean, we're not going to know from one minute to the next one, and then we'll get short notice, won't mm. we? It's okay if you like us, you live close enough. To yeah, you. Yeah. But for, for away games, yeah. you know, I'm just going to get told, like, today, that, that away game you thought was 3 o'clock on a Saturday isn't like we get now, but with greater frequency. Mm. Yeah, no, it's... Uh, There's well, five 3 o'clock kickoffs this weekend. Yeah. What 
that from 25, 28, that's going to be like three maximum. Yeah. Which makes makes you just think, what's the point? Because the game, the, as you just said there, the game's going to be spread over the weekend that much because it, they're not going to want, say there's Thursday games in the in the, in the the uh, European games. They're not going to want three, two o'clock kickoffs on a Sunday. No. Because that, what's the point? Because they want to show all of them. They like. want all of them, don't they? So they're going to go, well, say, well, let's make one of them a Monday night game. Let's make one of them a 12 o'clock game. Let's make one of them a six o'clock or yeah, half six or a seven o'clock game. And they're just going to, drag football all round the weekend all for this stupid notion that people are, no, are going to stop going it's stop going to games all over the country for the club they support it, it's the thinking behind it is so weird because on one hand they're punishing people at the moment for providing streams uh, you know boxes and 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 sticks and pubs having it on and putting people in jail for it but they're not really dealing with that issue because they're basically saying well we'll still have the three o'clock games on that you can't watch where those people will still stream like just get rid of the issue get rid of the get into the get into the modern age and i i you know when you listen to like i was watching like wrexham last night and <coughs> the wrexham doc and the guy was saying like you know you used the, the noise, no noise, no fans. Now we can't, we sell out all the time, and football's buzzing. I thought most people now like the f- going to match, they like the match experience. Mm. And and there's actually the episode that I watched last night. I don't know if you've seen it, but um, I started series oh, two. Yeah. Well, there's an episode where the CEO goes on holiday, and everything just seems to go wrong. And one of the things is Rob Rob McKenny 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 Decides That's your word, Prowse, isn't it? Decides that he comes over to Wrexham, but they're playing away, and he can get a stream on his phone because he's the owner. So he gets this stream up in the pub, and everyone starts watching it. On and his it, phone. And the CEO's like, you're not allowed to do that. You will get us in trouble. And he basically does this explainer of how stupid it is. That he can watch that he That anyone in the rest of the world can watch and he's sitting in a pub next to the ground and wrecks him. And they're playing away and he's not allowed to watch it. And he's like, the game is sold out. I, we can't, I mean, he could go if he wanted to, obviously. But he's like, all these people in the pub can't go the game. Because there's yet, no tickets. Because there's no tickets. And yet we're stopped <coughs> from watching a stream, which I have right here. And everyone in the world does. And it, it is that when you just stop for two minutes and go, you know, every Everton away game is sold out. Now, if that game's not on live... Well, it's ha- sold out by Everton fans, but it might not be sold out by the home team, I see. That's, that's their fault. Not Isn't it more about the other 72 clubs in the pyramid? No, I know it is, and I'm not being selfish, but I truly believe that if you if you want to watch a game right now, you can watch a game. If you if Liverpool and Man United were playing at 3 o'clock on Saturday, which it could happen because of like Champions League and stuff, if it fell that way, people would go to the pub or find a stream of it somewhere rather than going to watch Doncaster versus Tamir. That's just fact. That is absolute Man fact. Man City Brighton this weekend yeah. is going to be a good game, isn't it? Yeah. It's a three o'clock kickoff. There'll be lots of people watching that on the stream. Of course they will. Of course they will. And they won't be saying, ah, I'm not going to watch my local team. I'd rather watch mm. this. They'll be going, I'm not going to any game at all. I'll watch mm. this. Mm. Or my team's away. So I'll watch and so on. Yeah. Right. Um, so that's like seven live games every match weekend, game weekend. Mm. And so the thing have to be spread out. The thing about it is, if you're a successful team as well, or you're a big team, big are they team. the same thing, sort of? Well, they are, aren't yeah, they? Yeah. But I mean, what I mean by that is, though, they can, you can the be, ones people want to watch. But they can be different because Liverpool are a, a big team, but they're not in Champions League, so they're going to play more Sunday games. Sure. They're never going to get three o'clock Saturday games. They're just, you're just not going to get them. By virtue of that's the only one we can't show live. So and we need you to be on live and so we will find a twelve o'clock game for you or a two o'clock game for you. We don't want them at the same time. They just don't they just won't allow Liverpool and Manchester United to not be on telly because and that's what makes a mockery of it. So if you so every three o'clock game will be a game that you most people couldn't give a monkeys about anyway. It's so stupid. Mm. Maybe this is maybe this is the final step before before we get to the the all the all in one big deal where someone like Apple comes in, takes <laughs> over, 
and we have you know when they're not bothered about the the big game or such or they are bothered about the big game but they only have one big game every week so they focus it all in on the four o'clock sunday game and put all the hype into that or the mm. Monday night game and bring all the hype back. And all the other games are just like they are now where you just pick up, you can just switch them on and you've got a little bit before, a little bit after, which, you know, likes of Amazon have already done. And suddenly um, you're watching your game and that's all you really care so about. What Martin says, because I've just got a chance to read it mm. while you were talking, he says, for the first time, all matches displays to Sunday at two o'clock, i.e. those yeah. European games you're talking about, will be broadcast live it doesn't say they'll be broadcast at two o'clock on the sunday does it no. it says they'll be broadcast live yeah, yeah. and if you're if we assume that the two big rights holders are going to remain sky and mm -hmm. tnt then there's going to be somebody else let's say apple for mm -hmm. example who are going to be have live matches yeah. every game week now amazon have as you say they bought a package which mm -hmm. is basically christmas right yeah. so they're either going to expand and say we'll cover a game every single at least one mm -hmm. every single game week or yeah. somebody else will step in well to be someone like a streamer I mean, it's not amazon or apple it's going to be someone who's going to be trying to charge exactly yeah. what tnt and sky do i it's a satellite based you, thing and it's another 25 quid but you do fan. wonder because i think like a streamer like an apple i don't think they particularly care if all the games are on at the same time, Amazon have already showed this. They don't particularly care. That's true, actually, because they are in, in, in the MLS, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, but they don't particularly care if all the games are on at the same time. They're not interested. They're, all they're interested in is that they have everything. Then you're forced to buy it anyway. So mm. it doesn't really matter if your game is on at the same. They're after you as a fan true, of true, a club. True. So, so maybe that two o'clock one that that might say. I don't know how they'll break them up. There's five, isn't there? But they might look at it and say, well, these ones, packages, these packages are going to be times where more than one game gets played. And that's where an Amazon or an Apple might step in and say, we'll in. in those. Because we'll we don't those. care. They'll say, we don't care. We don't need the marquee game of the week because we're not getting the marquee game. We're looking for, we're looking for the, we're looking for all the Everton fans, all the Villa fans, all the Brighton fans, all the West Ham fans who just want to watch their team and don't actually care about watching the, the other the other well they'll watch their game before they think about even watching anyone else's game well, i would yeah that's what i'm saying yeah, yeah. but some fans you some fans will be like some fans who obviously don't there'll be obviously there's going to be plenty of people who who, who buy the premier league but don't support premier league teams and they just want the the big games and they might not always watch them but you you want those games where it's like i'm watching this because it's my team but they're so um in comparison I mean, MLS is probably the nearest, but mm. Apple have really bought into that league, haven't they? Right? Of like, that's our league, mm. so to speak. Um, but Baz, you might know this because you're well, well into MLS. Know when you buy an MLS season ticket for Apple, yeah. and it's not very expensive at all, yeah. is that for every single game? Yeah. Can you pick the same package, but just for your team? Or do you just, there's like one price. No. Hundred dollars or whatever it is, every single that, game, and that's how they get you, isn't and it? That's how they. I mean, hundred dollars, even if that converted, say two hundred pounds, like double, mm. you can watch every single every Premier League. League. No, because that within this package, that's how they get you, isn't it? Yeah, of because course. it's all or nothing. It's this, that'd be a good. Could be a good show, show that wouldn't yeah. it? It it is that it is it's the it's the and this is why. It's, and it's, you can bounce between games quite easily. Well, you can have that, you and also the MLS stuff, and also you can create a scenario where if you aren't interested in the teams, you could you have you know you can watch like the an overarching program which goes from game to game and has that excitement. Yeah. I think that's why obviously they're going to to have all ten games the last mm. game of the season to create that thing of well, how oh, can get on. Someone might some yeah, might yeah. be having an OV and some, <clears throat> but also because split screen the whole nine yards. Yeah. But also because. That doesn't happen very often. It happens once a season where everyone plays at the same time. So what? So why should you again be denied from watching your own team? I remember last season when we played Arsenal last game of the season. There was nothing on it, but I wanted to watch Everton. I mean, it's my job for a start. Trying to trying to get a, a stream for that game was ridiculous because it, all the focus was on um, Liverpool were playing at home and Manchester United, uh, Manchester City because the league was still up for grabs. And I, I just want to watch Everton versus Arsenal. Yeah. I couldn't care less. If if the title's still, uh, so I think for someone like Apple, you didn't go and watch Tramia simply because a, no. a they weren't playing, <laughs> yeah, because their season's finished. But even so, you wouldn't say, mm. "Oh, I can't watch Everton, yeah. so I'll go and watch Tramia or I'll go and watch Wrexham because they're sold out anyway," mm. and so on and so forth. Um, let, me, let me just make this point because I think this is really important. John John Hunter said every club should be in charge of their own image rights. This. 
then subscribe to your own team and th and then general subscription for any other teams. John, the problem with that is, mate... It's a good idea, though. It's not a good idea, oh, John. Well, come on. Debate. No, no, no. Come on. Right? Put it this way. At the moment, pretty much TV rights are split equal. The minute, oh, sorry, you want to, the the minute Manchester United and Liverpool get to control their own rights... They're up there and we're down there, and that's just the way. For the fan, it's a good idea. No, of for course, the, for, the the, for the sporting stuff, it's not. It's not financial. It doesn't make any sense mm. at the moment. We're split. Look at the Barcelona and <laughs> Real Madrid situation where they got more money. Well, they're ahead of everyone. Then you, you, it's, it's. I think it's bad enough the way the the way the. I don't think personally, if you're on television more than someone else, you get more money. I think that's an. I think that's an auto just playing the game anyway. But it's that to me is a disgrace because you're not picked on merit whether you're on television or not. You're picked because you're Manchester United, you're Liverpool all the time. You're on television regardless because they have more fans watching on TV. It's as simple as that. So why are they getting paid more to be on TV? They've it, got more fans watching. Or they bring more fans to the to the But how but why did they get more fans and more fans and more fans? Because they're on television more, so therefore people have more eyes on them. Whereas someone who's not on television, like Sheffield United, are not going to be on television this much this year. They'll be on the minimum, won't they? Probably exactly. Unless so they get into it, so they're going to die. So they're going to Asian game, yeah. and therefore they're going to earn less money. That to me, it's not that's not fair. You want the North American approach where it's all split, equally, everything split yeah. equally because I throw merchandise in. You earn your, <laughs> well, you earn your money through, well, that part being shared amongst everyone. Is 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 just fair? It is just fair. It's interesting that um, whenever they talk, they being the people at the Premier League, mm. say that McMaster's or somebody, yeah. they talk about the Premier League as the most successful league mm. in the world, biggest brand, all that mm. sort of stuff. And yet the treacherous six think actually it's them. Yeah. Right. So one opportunity which may come when they go all in on the streaming side, is just, just set some of those rules, mate, like you're talking about, which mm. is let's make the league what people want to watch mm. and let's distribute the money exactly equally. Yeah. Why wouldn't you? That's always been the rule, hasn't it, really? That's always what's separated the Premier League from everywhere else is that... I mean, it's, it's eroded a bit, but it is closest to... Wolves beat equal. Manchester City. Yeah, two, three. Oh, weeks, the competitive bit. Three weeks ago, talking about the money. No, no, yeah. but a team towards the bottom of the league beat a team that was unbeaten. Yeah, a team that had won the treble. That doesn't really happen in other leagues. And then the following week they go to Arsenal, who's their closest competitor, and then they get beat again. And that's the beauty of the Premier League. You know, Liverpool go to Tottenham, and it's a close game, and it's a big game, and and a, something happens. something happens, and Liverpool suddenly get beaten. That's the drama. The following <coughs> week Liverpool go to Brighton, and they end up being two two. You know. Liverpool go to Newcastle and the, the Gavin Man sent off and the 1 0 down, they end up winning the game 2 1. That is the Premier League. That's the beauty mm. of the Premier League. Everton last season go to Brighton and no one gives them a hope in hell and they win 5 Gosh, who, who, I'd love to be able to go back in time and see what the odds were. Exactly. Winning 5 but 1 that's, away. That's the beauty yeah. of the Premier League. And those, you're right, those six teams or, you know, certainly believe. That, and they do, those American owners, have, they've already proved it because they have now got a bigger share of the international. The threat they got worked, but, yeah. But the problem is, is that you just that just doesn't work. They have so much an advantage already. They go into the Champions League, they bring the money back from that. They wanted to go in the Super League and bring the money back that. I just don't, I, I can't understand why we're giving them more TV money as well. Like, it just doesn't make any sense to well, me. Well, you know, <laughs> you know what? Transparency would be a wonderful thing, wouldn't it? Because... Mm. You know, again, keep we always, whenever we get in any subject anywhere near this, Gary Neville comes up, doesn't he? Mm. You know, Gary doesn't understand why the 14, yeah, don't make things happen mm. that suit the 14, yeah, right? They could all 14 could take the moral high ground about yeah. we're all about pushing the brand and so on. And if you're the current big six, because mm. it won't last forever, mm. right. If you're the current big six, then you're either with our in our club or you're not. Yeah. And our club's called the Premier League. Mm. And and the, the, the price or the cost of not being in the Premier League far outweighs the whinging and bitching about we want that little bit more than everybody. Well the else. thing about it is, John, ultimately the people who are in the fourteen don't want to be in the fourteen. They want to be in the seven or the eight or the nine or the ten or that's the eleven. The vested interest bit, yeah. That's they don't want they don't want to be If it is yeah. a seven, eight, nine, ten. Well that's well, yeah. 
I mean, it should be a 20. Mm. Ultimately, it should be a 20. Or a it 40. Sh- you know, because ultimately, yeah, each club, like you mentioned there, the NFL. I mean, the NFL's mad because the people who own, own the clubs are the most unscrupulous people in the world. They're, there's some real, real... Characters. Characters. I wouldn't say... But, but they are, aren't they? They're, they're all old white men who've, who, you know, are very, you know... Rich. Rich, yeah. And and you look at them, but, but the way they look at it is we're all going to be equally rich and we're not going to have... Uh, one dragging us down and we're not going to have one pulling away from us and every year we're all going to have our chance. Now, okay, that's not how football works. But then some of them come over here and suddenly start going, no, we want more than you. We want more than everybody else. And I understand the reasons for that. But part of it has to be a TV deal that works for everyone. I'm just, and I'm just <coughs> looking at this one, I'm just thinking, this is, this, uh, this has got to be... What's the value on this deal? It hasn't been mentioned, but oh, it's, right. I think it's more that way. Well, it'll have to be more, isn't it? Because they've obviously had to give up something, and that's basically three. I think someone's just said there there'll only be, uh, is it three? Three, um, three o'clock kickoffs a week. That's what I said five yeah. minutes ago. Yeah. Sorry, can I just, yeah. just giving me. Just, just as an average. Just, just giving just, the viewers you know, a bit of credit. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, but just the number divided by, say, a 36 week see, season. I don't like. understand. And I'll go back to what I said before. I don't get that. I just don't understand why why you would say, well, we're only going to have three and almost upset on, all, on average three. all the match-going yeah. fans when you could say, no, on any given week, we could have six or seven, but they'll all be live. But on a, on a Sunday, you're going to have your your big one, your big one. You're going to have your big, you're going to have your City, your Liverpool, your Man United, whoever it is, whoever the flavour of the month is. Or if it's Champions that League th- that week, like we've seen recently... <coughs> Man City, Liverpool will be playing at three o'clock on a Saturday, but you'll be able to watch the game. Liverpool won't, will they? Because they're in the no, they, but no, no, but listen, they'll probably get back into the Champions League soon, I yeah. imagine. Yeah, but they'll get they then people will go, well, if they're playing at three o'clock, and then what'll happen is you'll have two Champions League weekends bounce uh, weeks back to back, and then cl- they'll get a 12 twelve kickoff because and they Klopp have to be complain. on that, and then Klopp will complain instead of just saying, well, why didn't you just give us three o'clock kickoffs? That'll Broke it just doesn't make any sense. It, I, I don't get it. I don't get it. Because someone's always going to get the short straw and have the earliest one, aren't they? And the other side of that is... Or a Friday evening. Yeah, and the other side of that is if Liverpool... If teams are playing in Champions League and they insist on playing that game... Because don't forget, in like Germany and in like uh, France, those teams get to play on a Friday night often. Yeah. So what will happen is, the reverse will happen is where you'll start getting like what we had a couple of weeks ago when the Ryder Cup was on. So we got... Sheffield United it or Nottingham Forest or a really really poor yeah. game and then people will go I'm not I'm not watching this so you have it the other way but it's like well, well that was just the price for the broadcaster which getting, again I can't the other stuff that and that to me is disgusting by the it way is, it is the, yeah. the fact that a TV company could tell you what they wanted you to watch on it well you no know, you should I don't I couldn't care less about watching the you know rider. what but it does suggest though that the the selection of games mm. is going to get more complex isn't it like trying yeah. to avoid three o'clock kickoffs for really big games yeah we all know that every single pretty well is it actual mm. probably every single live fa cup series of live fa cup games mm. at a particular round always includes man united always so are we saying that man united pretty much will never ever play a premier league game at three o'clock on a saturday because they'll always want the man united game to be one of the live ones yeah. Unless in here there's some rules that say the three o'clock yeah. kickoffs, each club has to have so many th- during mm. the season. But my point is, scheduling it all gets more complicated, doesn't it? So that bloody big Premier League computer that apparently randomly yeah. does fixtures isn't, is it? No. It's going to be less and less likely. Yeah. No, it's it's going to be, as I said, it's going to be it's going to be more complicated, and. It's not gonna. It's not gonna. It's not gonna work out the way clubs want to add. Like I was saying about if you're in the Champions League on that Tuesday, you want to be playing on the Saturday. Now, if you're playing away and they go, well, we can only really offer you the R five because we want you on telly. That's going to upset the clubs. It's going to upset fans instead of. And I just, I just take the shackles off and just say we're having three o'clock live games, even if it's just for three years. And after three years, they they find out whether it works or not. The other thing which comes into this, and this is breaking newsy type stuff, isn't it? 
is the Premier League are now selling the rights to the EFL, aren't they? Yeah. So one assumes whatever they're doing in this mm. has some relationship with what they're going to do for the EFL stuff. Mm -hmm. So now the 20 versus the 72 might be the 40-something versus the 30-something. Yeah. In other words, League two, League 1 and League 2 become the, the poor guys out, out of it all. But that grassroots thing, mm. which they talk about so much, if the whole ethos of all this, which is, I think you implied when you said, you know, well, you didn't say the words, but what you implied was the Premier League want more money for their products mm. and part of the price is more games at silly times, as yeah, we yeah. might see it. And so if that's the price of ever increasing, be it UK or overseas uh, broadcast rights, then share it with those clubs. Yeah. And say, lads, with best will in the world, we're, three o'clock kickoffs are all going to be live mm. for, for Premier League clubs as well. Mm. Put them on in your bloody lounges and drag people mm. in. Yeah. Yeah. If well, need be. Well, even if it was. Or change your games to kick off at different times than three o'clock. Well, that's what you. There's ways and means. I, to I, all these things. I, I'm not sure. I'm, I don't know where we are with, with it. I don't know how many people actually go to games. Um. Or don't go to games because of games. I mean, it's never been... We don't know because it hasn't been proven. But attendance has seemed to be pretty strong. Now, people might say, well, attendance are pretty strong because there's no games to watch. But I don't know. I think people like going the game. I think people like going the match. I think... I wonder if there's any stats out there, you know, if <clears throat> when there's no Premier League games, international break... Mm. And no championship either at the same time, is there? I don't think. Or yeah. Do, yeah. No, no championship, no. Do League One and League Two attendances go up? Yeah. Well, they do have. need their live football fix. They do have. Um, they, do, they have non league day, don't they? Mm. Where people you're encouraged to go and watch non league yeah. games. But I mean, just generally, because people do it through mm. selection. I want to go to a game. My local League One team are playing. I'll go there then. Not because there's been a lot of PR mm. about please go. Some people do, I know. You do see people who are really into it decide they're going to go somewhere and and watch something. It's I've, I think I've, I've I'm, I'll have done it myself in the past years ago, but it wouldn't bother me now. But that that's what they've got. They'll have stats and things to it find out. Goes back to you, you want to watch your own team, don't you? I that's it. That's all. I that's all I care about. Being able to watch my own team, I just still find it absolutely crazy. That there'll be games during the season that I can't watch. I, I find I mean, games you mean? Yeah, like well, the Aston Villa game when it was in the League Cup. It's just crazy. It's just like, and I understand that as well. I understand, well, you have one game per night because the Sky want to make the most out of the. But again, that's that to me is mad. You've got a system where you could have every single game on live and let us all choose and let just choose what you've you've you. We still we still have to go to you to watch it. They're not these games are not out in the wide world. Mm -hmm. We have to go to Sky to watch this game. The problem with that though. What are they going to do if all the games are live and everyone watches Everton Brentford rather than Liverpool Man United? They might burst that bubble. Well, they might, but everyone's watching. Ultimately, it doesn't. Really, rap about it it doesn't really matter, does it? Ultimately, yeah. they've they've got your money. They took your money off you because, <coughs> and you've paid. And this is why. I mean, me and Baz have championed this recently. Like the likes of Apple make sense because you've they've took your money, and once they've took your money, and you know your team's going to be on live, to watch it. what What does it matter? What no. does it matter? Agreed. What game is on the Sunday, or what game is on any time? You know, the more likely of this is, you'd probably, you'd probably get more times to suit you as a football fan, or, or as soon as an away traveler, you'd be like, well, we probably know now that most of our games aren't going to be moved for television. You, Sky, can, Sky and the other towns can, well, not, but, Amazon or whoever could still have their spots, their one-off games. There are four on a Sunday. There are 12 on a Saturday. they one-off games to, that they build up as the big game of the week. I just, It's just mad. I don't Very care. fond, aren't they, uh, people of talking about sporting integrity and mm. stuff. And yet the most obvious um, manipulation of sporting integrity could be simply how much you put a particular team on TV. Yeah. Because yeah. they inevitably end up with more money. They end up with more money. I know that I, it's it's why and then I as I've said loads like same before it's like that happened in the nineties to Newcastle so suddenly you had this like popularity in Newcastle explode Sky created that because they just were like we can tap into something here and they suddenly created a fan base that hadn't been there because they just decided to start your own Newcastle for all we know they could have had a guy who was the 
an executive somewhere with who was a Newcastle fan and went, I've got I know how I can make Newcastle bigger. I know how I can sell more of their kits. Mm. It it to me that's what been up for that's been up for um abuse for years, but it's never really been spoken about. But we'll see what happens anyway. More more yeah, as you said before, more schedule changes, more unless they actually I mean, they can't again because it all comes down to like they want, can't actually do it till they get like the fixtures for the Champions League and the European. But look games. at me, right? I, and me and the missus, we go to every Everton game, mm-hmm. home and away. If we start getting truly random away games at past seven on a Friday night, yeah, we might stop going, might we? Yeah, because you just think it's work, whatever. It's just all too hard and difficult. We already have fans now who who have to take time off work so they can go to games. Well, they start thinking about the benefits, mm. you know, and all that. I'll stay at home and watch it on some dodgy stream, right? Mm. But as soon as you don't have away fans in the ground, some of that vibrancy, which is what the Premier League is all about, is inevitably mm. going to be diluted, isn't it? Yeah. You know? Mm. Yeah. You know, how long before you we see a Premier League game where, where in real life the only people in the stadium support the home team? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's not going to be good, is it? No, you reckon? Okay, it could. Listen, this could all. It, it could I all. I don't see it. I don't see it. People want to go for a line. Yeah, I think so. No, I, 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 I've got to believe that if you say Everton are playing away at half past seven on a Friday night at West Ham, mm. that there's a better than even chance that it won't be sold out. Oh, I'm, well, be, I'm mad enough to go. I'd oh, end up be sold out for that. Yeah. But a Friday night wouldn't be an issue. Um Except yeah. that you've already you're gonna play away on Monday as well in Brighton. I think the home <laughs> games are more likely to be an issue. Because away games, you know what you're getting with away games. You know you're getting your hardcore, you know you they're gonna go anywhere at any time. Or whatever, yeah. Where's the away home games where it times are getting changed? People have booked the flights over from Ireland and or whatever. And then it moves, and then suddenly people are like, "Well, I can't go." Well, the stand's not finished. Yeah, it's it's. So it's not live. It's nearly live. There is something actually in that about the about. Like three o five, you can start watching it. So yeah. Seeing it live. Yeah. Yeah. If you really want to do it, and I've done this lots of times. Lock, turn your phone off, turn it off, and just watch it. Yeah. For you, it's live at that moment. Well, like recording stuff, isn't it, and watching it? Yeah. As live, close like to live. <laughs> there is something in there about near live package. Because it's not live anyway, is it? Yeah. Anyone who watches a, a live game with like who scored on the yeah, phone, yeah. it's bleeping. No, well, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I just think. After this one, they just need to grow up and put it on one thing and allow people well, allow people to choose. They presumably will, and as as we said at the beginning, perhaps this is just the last stopping off. Point yeah, the last halfway all in. Uh, just do some comments It'd before be funny we finish. If the three major packages were all bought by streaming platforms, wouldn't it? Yeah, well, yeah, I imagine it'll Netflix, be... Amazon, and Apple clean up. Mm. Yeah, go for it, lads. Yeah, I just hope Apple buy it all. Four of the five. They yeah. won't, but I hope they do. Uh, Yannick says, Yannick was trying to get through, but he couldn't get through. Um, had some audio issues, but wanted to clarify the fact that if we, we stand no chance of staying up if we go into administration. African Cup of Nations will take Ghana and Dukes out during January. No possibility of new signings if we're in administration, plus the possibility of injuries. Absolutely no chance. The only way we stay up if we go into administration with 49 points, and we all know that's not that's not a reality. I think Baz has said significantly less than 49 points. Well, it could be, yeah, it could be. It's it's all about timing, isn't it? But I know what he means. He means 49 minus, so 40. But yeah, Baz is convinced. I tend to agree with him. 30-something, mid-30s would probably be enough. You reckon? Like a record low. Yeah, but you've got to add nine on, though, haven't you? No, he means net, right? I'm not convinced of that because... We always we we thought last we thought last year was going to be less than thirty teams suddenly just grab Find results when nobody else when people no I know they are but but they'll play somebody at some time when they've got no players or whatever you know what it's like we'll see we'll see um, Phil Williams says that's six three p.m. kickoffs per team 
So I three on. The sums so three on, T-Fall. three away. Yeah. Um, Danny says if the match is sold out, it should be on live. And most Premier League games are sold out now. Yeah, but it's about the other games, isn't mm. it? The, the lesser leagues that they're so called trying to protect. Yeah. I just the three live. No one, like, I'm with you. Just to be <clears throat> No one in a Premier League is going to go and watch a Champions League. Ticket. Absolutely yeah. right. Mm-hmm. No, that's not what they're talking about. They're talking about people from a lesser league not going because yeah. they follow a Premier League team. Yeah. Nonsense as well. Yeah. It is nonsense. I think it's nonsense. So, I... But the only way to do it, um, Brian Ball says, we need a trial for a season to see the impact. Well, I was thinking that earlier. Have a trial and Let's say, and say, and, and like this Premier League, say, like, we'll, we'll cover the... We'll cover, we'll cover the losses because the money they'd make on the back end of it if it proved to be positive would be worth But it. ultimately, again, <clears throat> everyone should be entitled to do what they want to do. Like, we're, gro- we're all grown-ups. If I want to... You, you've got, as I said before, you've, you've got them taking people to court over streaming. That shows there's a, there's a need for it. That shows that, that people want to watch their teams mm. and you're stopping them from watching their team. That doesn't make any sense. You watch and you you will put us American sports and you can literally watch any game you want. You can watch everything as long as it's not being blacked out in the local area. It's I just it blows my mind in this day and age. It does. It absolutely blows my mind. Um Barry pieces, the whole experience for the fans in the States is way better, to be fair. It's not if you're getting up at half six in the morning to watch a game like you will on Saturday. Eh? <laughs> I, could, I don't know how anyone does that. Getting Dragging themselves up at like half uh, five in the morning to watch Everton on the West Coast. It's, it's more than six hours' time, lads. Yeah, well, they're watching it on delay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, people do it. Yeah, they do. Well in. Yeah. Dan says uh, uh, football has been broken since 1992. Why? What happened before 1992? <laughs> what happened before? There was no football, was there, before 1992? Um, there we go. <coughs> we need to start getting more callers on this show. It's not You all asked us for a phone-in, and we're not getting enough callers, so I thought it'd be a few tonight. But thanks to Degsy for giving us a call. Um, shame on the rest of you. Shame. Shame on the rest of you. JC says, I'll, I'll, I'll be awake at 5.30 to watch this Saturday. Where are you? 5.30, so that's... West Coast, isn't it? Well, it's five hours difference on the East Coast, isn't it? So it's, yeah. So that would be half seven. What time did he say, half five? Half five. No, half six, sorry. So it must be mid somewhere. Yeah. Maybe Denver, I don't know. Cat might be watching it. Uh, there you go. Just the six hours earlier yeah. to get up. Yeah. Well More done. More G says I'm thinking we have two, three selected games in each league per Saturday or monetize it properly and redistrib- redistribute some of the profits across the league. Means the pyramid, I guess, yeah. 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 Well, that's the point though, isn't yeah. it? The point being is if the Premier League are taking <laughs> the rights for the for the EFL. And they're going to get the best possible deal for them because they are, because it's all packaged together. Yeah. Then part of that deal should be, well, we're having we're having three clocks, and that should just be part of the deal. Yeah. We will we will give you we will give you a great deal, and we're having our three clocks, and that should be the end of it. That should be. Do you wonder if it ever enters the Premier League's head to ask fans what they think? No, I know the answer. But... What fans? Which fans? The ones who go to matches every weekend. They're not bothered. About... Why does that help them? That doesn't help them. Doesn't help, does it? Helps the the fellow who gets up at half six in America. He's the one they want to talk to. How can we help him? Can we put make? Can we put a couple of kickoffs during the weekend that actually are reasonable times. reasonable time for you? Or the guy in I don't know Tokyo or Shanghai or the Middle East. That's where the growth in broadcasting has been cut, mm-hmm. international. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There you go. Right, that's it. We are done. Thank you. Shame on you for not calling. I'm <laughs> disappointed in you. You know who you are. You're looking at a blank screen. I'm looking at a camera. Oh, okay. It's on a blank screen. Uh, there you go. Right, we'll be back tomorrow at... Time's a presser tomorrow. Two, isn't it? Presser's at two tomorrow, so... Yeah, it's at two o'clock, so... so we'll start, be live at one o'clock. Starting by quarter past... We'll be live at one o'clock somewhere, so... Thanks for watching. See you later. Take care.